Hi, welcome to our YouTube for our next Floyd project. We are going to make strawberry shopping bags. And this is a fun project, um, eco-friendly, something you can give as gifts for Christmas or just about any time. So I'm gonna send you a document that has all the instructions. I pulled this from iCatBag.com. I've got the link on the instructions. But I've gone through and made a few changes. So if you want to follow the way I do it, you're welcome to do that. Or if you want to follow the way the original um, instruction writer wrote it, um, you can follow that way as well. The main change I made is I did not want to line the grocery bag. I wanted it to be one thickness of ripstop nylon. So it's the slippery kind of fabric that you have like for a rain jacket. And um, if you're near the Draper Joann's, currently those fabrics are, as you're standing at the cutting table, they're directly on the wall behind you. So it's straight across from the um, cutting table. They've been moved. So they're in the utility cabinet section. So nylon is famous for raveling, unraveling. You can see these kind of um, little strings, okay? So a few things you need to think about is um, if you're going to use a cutter, it needs to be really sharp. If it's not sharp, it'll dig these little threads into your mat and leave them there. So that's kind of something to, to keep in mind. The other thing is this is very slippery fabric. So on the back side of your ruler, you wanna put something kind of rubbery. And these are the newest True Grips. Okay, they have hearts and leaves. The most common True Grips are just a little clear, they're shaped like a donut, okay? But these heart and leaf, hearts and leaves are fun because you can use them to point to a number so say you're going to be cutting it two inches, you can use them to point. Um, but they also, they're, they're just rubber grippy enough. So when you put your ruler on there, it doesn't move. So it, it gives you that, that connection so things don't slide as much. So um, I've made changes in green on the instructions. So you'll just you can follow along her instructions or you can kind of go with mine so i'm not lining the bag so i've created a kind of a facing strip so we're doing these two strips instead of facing so let me just tell you really quick so you need two rectangles for your bag front and back that's 14 by 16. your straps are three and a half by 16. Now, her instructions did two per strap. I'm just doing one per strap, okay? Um, the facing is just two inches by the bag width, which is 14 inches, okay? And, okay, and then I have um, like cord locks. You can use a, um, key ring and we have the cording which we used some of these things last time so this is what the bag looks like when it's done okay here's another example this fabric isn't as narrow so you can see it, how big that strawberry is um, or the fabric isn't as thin but um, so there's another example, okay? And I didn't know to put a knot to hold my cord lock in, so I put it in here so it wouldn't slip off. So that's just the difference right there. So I've got some things kind of pre-sewed so we can kind of go through all the steps. And so we're gonna start at the bottom of page three, step one. And so um, you can join me at the sewing machine and we'll do that. All right, so the first thing I realized is I forgot to tell you that 
my example, I'm going to make a carrot. So I've got a bigger triangle for the fruit part of it, and a bigger um, hole is what they call it on our instructions, but it'll just be a longer top, so it'll be like the top of the carrot. So since I've already got two strawberries, I thought, why don't we change it up? And I think some of you guys are going to want to change it up too. Um, another thing I noted is if you round your corners, um, my one example would look just like a tomato instead of a strawberry. So um, just know that you can do that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put the sewing machine with the needle in the center position. And on this green strip, I need to do a narrow rolled hem on each side. So I have one here that I already did. So I'll show you how I do it. And I'm just folding it to get it started. Okay, now we're making our rolled hem on our green fabric. So I've just folded it twice and I'm putting the needle in. And you hold the ends and take a few stitches and then you just roll your fabric, just little teeny hem here. If it's a little bit big, it's not gonna be a problem because this doesn't have to be super accurate. Okay, now we're going to sew the seam that um, kind of creates the casing. So the instructions um, show that it's a smaller rectangle, but um, the easiest way, even with the size of rectangle they showed, is to sew one inch from the cut edge. And let me go to the page. Um, this is the top of page four. So we're going to sew one inch from the cut edge. We're folding to match the two edges together. And we're going to sew one inch away. Now, last time we talked about different ways to measure um, from your needle to um, figure out your seam allowance. And so here's just another tool. It's a little measuring guide. And I can see that if I run the cut edge right in the middle of this little hole on my machine, that'll be one inch. And again, this is a this is not something you're going to wear. So if you're off a little bit, it's okay. You can just call it design, um, your design preference. So we're just sewing a seam one inch away from the cut edge. Now we're ready to attach our green hull strip to our fruit. And this is step, um, step three on page four. So we're going to sew a little seam here. Now, if you use a quarter inch seam foot, it makes it super easy. But remember, we talked last time about other ways to get a quarter inch seam allowance. You're welcome to do any of those things. Um, if you were able to get a quarter inch seam foot, this is the easiest way to do it. So I've centered the green piece on my triangle, okay? And now I'm just going to sew a quarter inch seam matching those raw edges. Okay, now we are to the bottom of page four. And so we need to press this. And um, nylon fabric is kind of plasticky. So you need to have a pressing cloth. This is an official one um, that I purchased, but any um, fabric, I would just use a light color. You can use just a cotton fabric, okay? That just kind of helps to keep it, uh, our iron from melting the fabric, okay? So I'm pressing that seam flat, and now I'm gonna bend it up, and I wanna press the seam down. Um, her instructions say, press the seam open, 
but I think it's a cleaner, better look if it's down. So I've bent it over and, and folded these edges as well. And now I'll just slide this pressing cloth on here and I will just press it. And I'm gonna go ahead and press the top of that green hole piece. Okay. So now my fruit, my carrot, is ready to sew, to put position on my bag. So this is my bag, and you want to make two pieces that are mirror image. So I have one side of my bag. I have already placed a carrot on. You can see that right there. So I will do it on the opposite corner for this one. So you want to match your edges here. And so this is where the green thing is going to stay, the green piece. So we're going to flip up the fruit piece. It would be red or orange or whatever. And we're going to just place a few pins. And this kind of fabric is better if you don't um, put a lot of holes in it, but if you're doing it here like on the seam allowance, um, that's fine. Plus, we're not really making this as a windbreaker that you want to be waterproof, so the pins in the fabric is an okay thing right now. Okay. So we're going to sew along this fold line, and then it'll go down like that. Um, let's talk while we're here at the at this station. Let's talk a little bit, bit about our handle. You want to sew right sides together, and we're just going to sew a quarter inch along there. So we'll be able to do that sewing when we go back to the machine. And um, we're going to want to rethread our machine. And I'm just going to go ahead and rethread it with this green because the thread here won't show. Um, so I'm going to rethread it and we'll start sewing again. Okay, now I've got my uh, carrot placed on the corner of my bag and I pinned it. So I want to sew this seam and I'm sewing pretty close to the uh, fold line I made when I pressed it. So I'll just back stitch a little bit here and then we're just going to sew. And sometimes this fabric tends to not move as well on your machine so you might have to pull it a little bit. Uh, don't stress too much, just go ahead and pull it and get a good nice seam. My goal here is to stitch on the stitching line, I already have the green or very close to it, okay? Okay, now I've got the right color thread on the machine, so I'm going to go ahead and start my handles, which is the beginning of page six, the top of page six. Um, it actually says to create your... Uh, fruit to do the same thing but mirror image on the other side so you can see I've got two mirror images so I've completed that. So now step six on my version to make the handles. I just sew a quarter inch seam. I just fold it and sew it. Okay. Okay, now we're going to um, turn the tube right side out. One thing you can do to make it easier to open your seam allowances here, you can actually press them or sometimes you can just finger press them. So you get it open like this and just kind of press it along with your fingers. Okay, now here's the fun part. When turning a tube, we've created a tube for your, for your handle. And 
This is just a tube turner set I picked up at Joann's. You can get it just about anywhere. It's just a plastic tube and something like a chopstick. Um, it does come with a pack of three, so it's three different sizes. But I put the tube inside the tube I've sewed, and then I take a little fabric, put it in the tube, and then I just push it like this and push that, and you can see it just comes right out. Slide it down, and I've just turned the tube. Super easy. Now we will press it. We're going to press it with this seam allowance right down the center like this. And that basically made our handle. Now, if you like, you can always top stitch down each edge. But um, for these handles, I think this works out just great. Okay, now we are going to press our strap. And I've just laid that seam allowance right down the middle. I cover it with my little pressing cloth. And I just go the length up and down. Okay. And there we have our strap. Okay, now I have pre-done the one side of the bag. And so I have located where my strap's going to be. It's really just a matter of um, preference. Locate it anywhere you want it, um, but you want to match one side of the bag to the other. So I'm gonna set it like this so I can line up these top edges. Now we want right side to right side, so it'll be just like this. And I'm gonna locate this strap right there and then we're going to go here and line that up and we'll take this strap here okay then i'm going to sew about three eighths of an inch this is going to have a half inch um, seam allowance on this top part so um i'm going to attach it at eighths of an inch from the edge you can see right there and then I'm gonna put my facing in so the facing is so that I don't have to line the bag and mostly I did this but just because it shows you another way of doing it plus it keeps it lighter weight if you have two layers of fabric it's gonna be even harder to get into your um, little drawstring pouch so the facing, I'll show you on this piece, I just put right sides together. So this has a little bit shiny side, a little bit matte side. So I'm going to stick this right here. And this is going to sew with a half inch seam allowance. And I talk about that at the bottom of page six. Okay, so we're sandwiching the handles in between this facing and the bag. So we'll do all this sewing at the machine. So I've got my quarter inch foot on and I can still use this quarter inch foot. I just want to sew three eighths of an inch away now and I can see that this edge is three eighths. This was a quarter, but this is three eighths. So this foot's going to work just perfect for this application. So remember, we are just sewing the handle on. And it doesn't have to be anything special. We're just lining up those raw edges. Okay, now I'm going to jump over here to the next handle. I'm going to start it just before I get on the handle. You notice I didn't back stitch. That's because I will be back stitching, um, strengthening it uh, at a half inch. So this stitching just mostly holds it in place. So here is my bag with the handle sandwiched between the facing and the top edge. 
Now I'm going to sew a half inch and I'm just going to check with my seam gauge and a half inch runs right close to the polka dot on the machine or a little hole on the machine. Um, you can use whatever method you want to figure out exactly where your half inch is. Um, so we're going to back stitch right here. Okay. And this fabric does tend to shift or sometimes stick a little. So just hold on to your threads behind until you can get a hold of the fabric. Seems like it's pulling it, so I'm going to hold it a little bit stronger. Okay, you'll do that on both sides of your project. And now I'm going to show you how to kind of just reinforce strength and um, where the handles are, okay? You can use a zigzag stitch. My machine has... Um, a stretch zigzag stitch. So it makes a zigzag, but it, it does a few steps. And I just think it's a nice stitch to strengthen. And so before you do a zigzag, be sure to take that um, foot off because it only has one little hole there. And I tell you this because I've made the mistake many more times than you ever will in your whole life. So I've hit the needle right on the foot and shattered it, and it's kind of a scary thing. So I don't want you to have to do it. Um, so that's why I'm warning you now. So I've put my stitch on this stretch zigzag, and I am just going to go right along. I can feel where the handle is. Okay. So see that extra stitching? That's definitely going to strengthen our handles. Okay, and I'll just jump over here and do the same thing here. Okay, now we are going to um, work on some French seams. I want to teach you French seams with this project. It starts at the beginning at the top of page seven and um, reasons for French seams is you don't have any raw edges and nylon fabric frays a lot. You can see by, um, by my examples, look how much it frays. So by doing a French seam, we're going to take care of all that fraying. And so right at the top of page seven, I go through it. I'm going to go ahead and go through it here with you um, slowly, but that's where your instructions are right there. Okay, now we have two mirror images of our bag. I went ahead and pressed uh, the handle and the seam allowance up. And so we have these two pieces of the bag. So middle of page seven, it says place the pieces together. We're going to sew this seam first. But when you do a French seam, you actually do wrong sides together first. And then you do right sides together to do a final seam. That encloses our seam allowances completely. So we are going to to match the bags just like this okay and I'm gonna attach these I've got these little clips um, that I'll use to connect my layers together just because it's harder to sew a uh, to sew or to pin through nylon fabric so that's why I'm using these little clips Okay, so the instructions through the bottom of, of page seven show to just do the one seam, but we're going to go ahead and sew all the way around because there's no reason to stop. And once we sew around, then we're going to come and we're going to put our cording 
through this little casing right here. That's why we sewed the one inch away because we've created a casing for our um, cording to go through. We've got a few different cording options here. And so it'll just be able to go through like that. Um, so we'll talk about that after we sew the first seam here. This is a quarter inch seam. And then we're going to trim away all these little frays before we sew our final seam. Okay, now we're going to sew our quarter inch seam. We're going to go ahead and back stitch a little bit. And you are just trying to sew around the perimeter of the bag. Okay, now when you get to this point, right at the edge, now we need to leave a space for our cording to go through. So you're going to back stitch. And then you're going to jump and leave a little space, oh, about an inch or so. Um, so we want to back stitch both sides of that little opening. Okay, I've completed the seam around the bag. And I've left an opening right down here at the bottom, about a half inch. I have the threads there, but it really doesn't matter. But right now, we want to get rid of all this little hair around the perimeter. Otherwise, when we sew the seam, it'll all stick out and it'll look really tacky. So this is where you're going to want to take your straight edge with the grip dots on it or um, whatever you can think of to use it it will not move on you so much so i'm just going right along there and you can see i've got the hair off of that edge so that's a pretty clean edge right there okay and swing it around and do the bottom edge and you can see this seam is not a perfect seam. It's like the edges of the orange don't line up perfectly. It's okay because all of this is going to be enclosed. So it just doesn't matter that much. Okay. And I can just look through this. Okay, now we are going to flip our bag wrong side out so we can do our final, um, and I still have a few strings, so I'm just going to keep trimming those. Okay, I'm going to just take off a little bit of the corners right here just because it will be easier to flip the bag wrong side out. Okay, now we need to add our cording. So you're going to find the center of it, just tie a knot, okay. So we thread one end in, actually we can thread both ends in. Okay, and you've got your knot at that end. You're going to slide this in the two created by the green fabric. Just to make the other end easier to get through. I have this tool, it's called a bodkin, B-O-D-K-I-N. You can also use just a safety pin 
and that just gives it just enough stiffness to slide it through the casing a little bit easier. Okay. So it just allows you to thread it through. Okay, I've threaded those through. I'm just leaving them there for now. Now I'm going to turn my bag wrong side out. I'm using a little corner poker, but you can use a chopstick. Um, if you use a pencil, make sure it's not really sharpened. Um, just something to kind of poke those corners out. Okay. Now I do think it's easier to do this seam if we go ahead and press it a little bit. Um, and then we'll be sewing 3 eighths of an inch from the edge. So I am going to press the seam and then right down here at the bottom, I'll show you that right now. I'm going to reach in the bag and I'm going to find these cording pieces. And you can see right here, I'm going to pull both pieces of cording through this opening. I will want to catch the edges of this cording in this next seam, and I'm not going to have them go far, too far through. But I'm not going to want to catch the, the cord stop end in the seam. And it seems to stay out of the way. It's not a problem. But I will want to catch these. I, I'll just pull them back just enough so that they it doesn't seem too tight. Okay? So I'm going to go iron this and get this seam ready to sew. Okay? Okay, so we're going to iron our seam allowances open before we iron them flat. It makes it easier to get that sharp edge. And a towel is great to use so that you can slip it inside your bag and basically just open that seam up, okay? Now don't forget to use your pressing cloth because we don't want you to get to this point and melt your bag. Okay, you can kind of see a little, little bit of a pressing there. I have pinned both of the cordings just one side so that I could iron it this iron it open. The bottom is the hardest part to iron. It gets easier for the sides, so never fear if you feel like you're messing up the bottom. It'll get much easier. Okay, now we want to do the sides. And this towel will make it super easy to, to go all the way up the length of it. Okay, now this is the side where there is that cord block. Might have to move it around a little bit, but it shouldn't give us too much trouble. The reason we put the towel in is so that we're not pressing uh, the balance of the bag in some way that's going to be tough to get the, the pressing out. Okay. So now we've got that nice, there's a nice sharp crease there. And we're going to be able to just clip it. This is a really good seam to use on the inside of bags. I would say really often because you want your insides to look really nice. Um, this is a great finish to use on a pillowcase. Okay, now we're going to do our final seam with um, for our French seam. And remember we did a half uh, we did a quarter of an inch seam allowance first time. Now we're going to do three eighths of an inch, and that will enclose all those edges. Okay, so I'm going to back stitch, and I'm back stitching on the facing part. The facing is still um, pointed upwards, 
and you'll you'll discover as we finish the bag how nice it is to have the facing on at this point and how quick and easily we can finish it. So we're just doing standard stitching 3 eighths of an inch all the way around. Now we've reached the space where we have our cording and we want to anchor it in place. I found that I don't always have my cording long enough to do to tie a knot in it. So I'm going to just sew over it now. Actually, I want to angle it. There we go. I'm just going to sew over it and then I'll go back and um, tack it like we did the handles. Okay, now I want to anchor the cording. And because I have the straight foot on, rather than doing a zigzag, I'm just going to do straight stitch back and forth. So you can see I've just added a little bit extra stitching there, and that will anchor it no problems at all. Okay, now it's time to turn our bag right side out. We've just sewn that seam. And this is a little trick I learned. Um, you just put your finger inside the corner and you fold it on the seam and fold it down on the seam. And you actually get a pretty nice, pretty sharp corner, which works really nice when you're doing a mitered corner. Okay. So I like to use this method when I'm doing my final corner. So just put your finger in there, fold it that way, and fold it down. You're folding right on the seam. And then you stick your fingers in there, and miraculously, you have a pretty square corner. Okay. So we've got our cording in the seam down here. It's anchored nicely. And we've got our little cord stop, just like that, so it'll gather it up. Okay. So at this point, I could press these sides, but you know what? I think it's fine. It doesn't really need it. But I do want to press this top edge down because I need to finish this. So all these little hairs, we're going to want to tuck those inside. So I am going to fold right on that seam line. All right, now for the very last step, I'm going to go to my sewing machine. I'm going to turn this up about a half an inch. It doesn't really even matter too much how far I turn it up. And I'm going to top stitch right along that edge. But all of these little hairs will be enclosed and our project will be finished nicely. Okay, I went ahead and folded it up and put a few pins in um, at each side. It doesn't matter too much, but it will help you kind of make it a little bit more consistent. The other side looked a little bit bigger, so I'm going to loosen this just a little for me to start. Okay, I'm sewing close to the folded edge now. And I don't have to backstitch because I'll be coming around in a full circle. Okay. So it's just kind of an eyeball thing here. Just tuck all those strings in and sew close to the edge. Okay, now you're going to come back to your workspace and you're going to use a lint roller and clean up all your little fuzz, okay? You can also use a piece of tape to do this, but you can see that's a very handy tool for when we sew, okay? All right, so now I have my little bag 
my little carrot bag and you can see we put that nice edge right at the top. We've sewn all the way around. We don't have any yucky seams on the inside. So that's our finished project. When I put it into the carrot, I like to just tuck my handles in. And we're gonna see if this looks like a cute carrot or a super fat carrot. So it's the moment of truth now to see if we like this. And you know what? I have grown carrots that look a lot like that. Maybe you have, maybe not, but that's pretty cute. Okay, another option is on this one, I actually did a fancy stitch here along the top. Um, for our more advanced seamstresses, um, we you could do that. Um, it's not required, but kind of makes it kind of cool. And so this one, as we stuff it in this little thing, I this was my first one, and the fabric is a little bit thicker. So I personally think it came out looking a lot more like a tomato than a strawberry. So if I did this again, I would round the corners and call it a tomato. I just think that would be fine. And see, it's got a lot more fabric to try to squeeze in there. Okay. So not, not quite perfect. This is my strawberry option. It's just... I did actually do a reinforcement on the handle, so hopefully you can get an uh, up close shot of that. We've got sewing around the perimeter and an X. Now that would just make it extra strong, so um, you're, it just kind of is a little bit of a finish that you can use um, to make it look just a little bit more professional. And so this one, because the fabric was so lightweight, it seemed to fit that strawberry. And I did a cute little polka dot fabric, so I thought it was cuter. So that's probably my favorite strawberry right there. I'll call this my tomato and this my carrot. So I want to see what you guys come up with. Um, just play with different fabrics, different colors, and let's just see what you can create.